Having a fishery that is sustainable does a couple things. It ensures a food supply for our country, but it also provides a way of life that me and my family have enjoyed for many years. And I'd like to see that continue. I'm Buddy Glendon. I'm a commercial fisherman out of Galveston, Texas, and I love my job. We are out in the Gulf of Mexico with my son Hans and my son Christopher. Ooh, the big daddy! I'm gonna head out probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 miles to start out with. I've been fishing in the Gulf of Mexico for 39 years. I have seen so many changes in this fishery and it's kind of hard to comprehend where we were and where we are now. Our fishery was, uh, it's very overfished. Go ahead and fish. The old fishery management system was command and controls. The government set up an amount of fish you could catch, and then they would adjust that by a number of days at sea, or trip limits on your fish, or a number of people that could be on the boat. All these ways to limit you. See that hook in them already? There's been a lot of activity here, a lot of fishing going on. It's competitive. Um, the harder you work, the more money you made. But the craziness, the risk of, of your life, the, the maintenance of your equipment, all the things that I should have been tending to didn't get done. When the regulations were a derby fishery where we raced against each other to fish, you tried to fish as close in as you could, and that's where the smaller fish are. And so we were discarding as much fish as we were keeping. I had a reputation of playing fast and loose with the regulation. I was the kind of person I dislike today. The Magnuson-Stevens Fishery Conservation Act made us use science as the basis for how much fish we take out of the oceans. At the time of its implementation, 80% of our fisheries in this country were overfished. Today, 80% of our fisheries are either fully recovered or in the late stages of recovery. Nice six, seven pound fish. And it has saved our fisheries in the United States. As soon as this thing starts bending and jigging, we're getting fish. Well, each fisherman was given a portion of the catch in an IFQ system. And you stay within your catch limits, and you harvest the fish when you want. These fish here are too close to the legal size limit. Quarter inch too small. Back during the derby, we were under a time limit. Now we can fish year round, so if I get in a place where there's a lot of small fish, I just leave, come back to it when they grow up. It's really time to get out of here and go somewhere else. My allocation was 4.7% of the total allowable catch in the Gulf of Mexico, and that's what I fish, and, and that equates to about 360,000 pounds a year. The trade-off for the individual fishing quota system was accountability. They know when we're coming, when we're gonna be there, how much we're supposed to have, and, and it works better. The commercial system has helped give some breathing room to the fishery and let these fish come back because commercial fishermen are now incentivized to be stewards because they know they have a certain percentage of the harvest every year. They know that that percentage will be bigger in terms of number of pounds the more fish are in the water. Uh, my name is Robert E. Jones, and I'm the Gulf of Mexico director for the Environmental Defense Fund. Some detractors of this system have said this is just a sneaky way to privatize the resource. And I think anyone who takes a closer look at it realizes that doesn't really hold water. No one owns the fish. The American public owns the fish. You got 100 pounds of fish here in a matter of a couple of minutes. And then we could stay there all day and do that. 
there are people who have earned and bought the right to harvest a certain amount of fish. Uh, it's just a different way to manage. Let's go. There are recreational fishing lobby groups that doesn't like commercial fishing because it interferes with their ability to recreate. Will they alter the system? Yes. There'll always be someone that wants to tweak it or fix it. In the commercial fishery, there are very few people in the business that I'm in. But they also represent 97% of the people in the country who own this resource. The change for me came once I realized that I could do a better job. There was a time when I never allowed any of my children to get in the fishing business. It was a dangerous, hard, and if you worked really hard like I did, you made good money, but it wasn't the kind of money you should make for working like that. 439 pounds of red snapper, Andy. So once we changed from, you know, cheat, lie, steal to a system that took that away, this is Katie's Seafood Market. We have a retail market for the public. We're all on the same playing field now, and, and you see the fishery start to get better. And then you start to think, wow, this could be something I could let my kids do. It's got to be something you love to come out here and actually do it for a living. You can't, you, it, not anyone sh can just do this. It's, uh, it's, it's hard work, really. Easy right there. Now I can keep them in the fishery, and I can build a family business. I can have my whole family working together. That's been a dream of mine my whole life, and, and now I have it. And, and for me, that change came with individual fishing quotas, where I became a better steward of the resource, I became a better steward of my family, and I became a, a better steward of my fishing friends around me.